Dear colleagues, we will begin, and now let's take a look at the three laws of robotics. I'd like to remind everyone that we've got a great app, Finapolis, that you can use to ask questions uh, during the discussion, and I will address these questions to the speakers. I would like to introduce the speakers. First of all, Leonid Boguslavsky, founder of RTP. Founder. Oh, super uh, triathlon. Leonid, thanks for uh, taking part. This is Sergei Shvitsov, first deputy chairman of the Bank of Russia, Grigory, so co uh, leader algorithmic trading, Renaissance Capital. Grigory uh, collected the opinions of the public and questions. Uh, about today's uh, topic, and Andrea Siban, the director of marketing of Yandex. So, in general, I would like to tell you a couple of words about why we uh, decided this uh, take this topic of ethics of robots dealing with unfair practices, identifying unfair practices among people. We gradually moving. Uh, not only to identify unfair practices, but those uh, incentives that people are guided by and that they influence their selection in our behavior, and so that to consciously move from fair uh, behavior to unfair uh, behavior and to see, understand where this point of transition is, in, so that. Um, to try to influence it and support a fair behavior. Bank of Russia have developed a code of fair uh, behavior uh, that's been final, finalized and uh, will be published soon. We discussed it with all the participants of financial markets. And this like a program document that I hope will influence the public and financial industry uh, uh, during 10 to 15 years, and uh, I hope closer. And we are not the pioneers here, and our colleagues, uh, foreign regulators, um, are having this code for a long time, and it's um, like a pyramid. First, it's a general code, then industrial code, then a professional code. And um, at the same time, understanding that for the people. And for the people, we can develop such codes. However, along with this, we are aware of the fact that right now at the stock market, at the organized uh, uh, stock exchange, uh, uh, many requests are filed by algorithms. Robots are the algorithms that initially only carry out the tasks that were programmed by the designers. And we probably won't be able, we probably cannot say more at this stage because they're more of an algorithm. And to protect uh, from possible impact uh, stock exchange uh, from uh, uh, various uh, types of illegal behavior. Um, I have a question. Can we introduce the guidelines uh, that uh, the robot designers or the AI, if it's self-learning, uh, to control uh, private accounts or control institutional funds? And the first question I would like to ask of Leonid Boguslavsky to find out. If we look not only at the financial sector, is there other robots today that are closer to AI and independent decision making rather than simple algorithms? Thank you. Well, the section starts with three laws of robotics. And many know that there are actually four laws, because Isaac Asimov later introduced the fourth law, because the first two laws uh, can conflict with each other, uh, something that is safe or harmful for a person may not be safe and 
or harmful for humanity. And this is why the fourth law, which was considered paramount, they called it zero law, uh, that a robot may not cause harm to humanity or through inaction cause harm to come to humanity. So to begin this discussion about ethics in robotics, I think it's uh, important to mention black boxes first. Well, today the complexity of algorithms uh, with Never mind the neural networks, but the complexity of algorithms for trading is that it's not a black box if a person uh, observing the algorithms or neural networks, if a person can see it and understand it uh, in detail. But even for a trading algorithms, as far as I understand, it's quite often difficult to unpack, unbundle layer-wise uh, and understand why a certain decision was taken. When we begin discussing neural networks, this is an extremely complex problem because a neural network consists of very simple elements, but tens of thousands of these elements working in conjunction create, uh, of course, based on uh, input data. There is external input data, and then there is also input data from one subnet, from one layer of the neural network to other layers, and to unbundle uh, and understand this, these layers in the decision-making process is extremely difficult. And I have just remembered that at the birth, at the outset of uh, Russian microelectronics, when a facility at Zelenograd tried to copy Intel chips, there was a technology of uh, of a layered silica removal to understand how electronic uh, connections are organized, but it became impossible. And understanding this trait, uh, this concept of black box, uh, we come to an understanding that the most important is input data and restrictions to this data on output. There is a classic example of input, I think, sometime in the 80s. There was um, a piece of software that used to select, for instance, in the US, there was such a program that was uh, that was selecting candidates, uh, applicants to medical universities. And this software, this program became discriminating against colored uh, persons and women. When they investigated, it turned out that the set of input data that was introduced was statistically represented in a way that the most effective doctor is a white male. Uh, and uh, without having any any important uh, uh, censorship with input data, this is what can happen. And if we talk about output data, there is a game a few years, it came out a few years ago. It's called Universal Paper Clips. And this game imitates AI. The key job of this AI is to optimize staple production. And here in this game, if you don't introduce restrictions, so this is what happens. First, the AI uh, restructures the factory that it makes. It begins producing more and more staples. Then AI understands that it can be done at different factories, so it begins taking over other factories, other production facilities. Then it begins capturing resources more and more. And finally, it begins producing staples out of any material, including people. And uh, this is the output data. So without any restrictions, 
if we don't introduce any ethical uh, restrictions um, at the output, this is what can happen. So we're also aware if we discuss um, algorithmic trading, sometimes it does happen that uh, something unclear happens. But uh, we see the result, the portfolio falling by 3 or 5 percent, and the limitation should be that the robot should stop trades. And then uh, we go to uh, investigate the incident. So I think these limitations, these restrictions are very important. Everything, all the burden, the onus is on the developers. And everyone understands that these ethics have to do not with robots, but developers and designers. And of course, they're all different. And some of them aren't uh, uh, very decent people. And uh, so one of the ways this problem will be solved is that AI is going to not is going to be analyzed not only by the developers uh, who is going to censor uh, the input the set of input data but there should be ai that controls the developer and same goes for restrictions of the output and input uh, it will control it and there will be another uh, authority, maybe also AI, uh, that can also take decisions. And I wanted to stress that uh, today we're saying this is not uh, robot ethics, this is developer ethics, but it has to do with input data and output data. Thank you. Well, I was struck by the doctor case in white male. My wife is a doctor. Of course, she would not have passed the test. But uh, at home in the evening, in our uh, kitchen, I hear plans uh, of uh, she's a dentist, and I always uh, hear various treatment plans from her. And as a result, it, after these uh, treatment protocols, it turns out that the person doesn't uh, uh, follow the doctor's recommendations, but usually goes for a cheaper option or out of own interest. But usually it's not. Uh, this is not a recommendation from a doctor. People don't usually follow educated medical professionals' recommendations. And frankly speaking, I'm afraid that the system that will recommend better solutions will, in some way, shape, or form, will uh, clash, uh, will come across um, a human decision that can make the wrong decisions, ultimately. And the system learning with such decisions, uh, from such decisions, is going to adapt to that and understand that if the user break is breaking the ethics principles or the law, then um, it can be done. So what is the question here? Sergey Anatolievich, could you please tell me, in terms of robo-advising, in terms of testing, and in terms of uh, the last word a human should have, what could you tell us about the criteria, assessment criteria that were developed? Well, thank you. I should also note there is a fourth element, and this is the society. And if we introduce community interest, uh, it was 77 years ago it was first put on paper. It's impossible to add anything. The whole four laws of robotics are correct. But there is no concept of owner, master. There is a concept of human. It's an abstract human. He may not be a master or a owner of the robot. So if one owner uh, of a robot can, say, kill another person, a uh, robot won't do that, although it can cause harm to its owner. So let's philosophize. Speaking metaphysically, when we speak of Turing tests, and uh, there are cases when people are not able to understand they're communicating with a chatbot, uh, we've gone past that. But the next philosophical level is, can AI have consciousness? And if it can, then basically it can employ different ethos than those 
uh, programmed by the developer because this has been acquired not through uh, hardcore algorithms uh, by the developer but through machine learning and we will see very interesting developments here and I agree with Leon uh, on that that there should be strict uh, controls on input data so this AI doesn't go uh, into problematic areas. So uh, the testing of uh, these laws, of these restrictions should be an important element. We have created a task force and we analyzed about six advisor robots, which are now offered by financial organizations. They used to be tested by the self-regulatory organizations according to protocol. So uh, the it was inconclusive, and of course this was the first attempt, this was a trial, but we did not see the deliverables we expected. And the gap we see is that following this, this ethical laws of robotics, we're not talking about life and death. This is a very simplified concept that harm means human death. Harm can be... Uh, can be harming uh, their financial state, uh, reducing their quality of life, causing harm through buying wrong products, uh, which can lead to a heart attack, for instance, because uh, they can get a financial shock, uh, which doesn't correspond to their expectations. Another way to harm a person uh, may be is that he's 80, but he'll get a 30-year life insurance policy, which he won't be able to collect on. And uh, what is the main drawback? of robotics is that they're on the broker's side and they're not interested in the client. So they're selling a product to an abstract person, whereas the laws of robotics, if we uh, transform it into financial markets require a deeper understanding about client needs. And uh, as uh, a colleague said, signing 16 pages of small print, a client is not becoming smarter or wiser, doesn't gain any knowledge because he doesn't read this small print. So uh, counting on some handicap of trust uh, to a financial broker, person trusts him and he says, uh, he is not going to deceive me. This is why I'll sign everything and then rely on my broker. So to get your customized advice and consulting, except for this advice being cheap and fast, for this advice and consulting to be really customized, personalized, a robot has to understand his client. And of course, uh, this cannot be done through 10 or 15 questions. And in the future, in my viewpoint, I see the robots on the human side because robots have to live with people. They have to understand them every day. They have to understand them, uh, understand the financial uh, uh, state of a person better than the person himself. It seems to me that a person won't be able to entrust himself to 10 different robots, one for dentistry, another one for travel, another one for uh, finance, and uh, because uh, this system is going to take care of person's health, uh, person's finances, person's leisure, because all of these three elements are interconnected, because your health uh, defines your financial planning. Your, fin your finances can define the type of leisure, and this is a, uh, this is a vicious circle, and uh, they can either inter interact or be a single entity and it seems important to me uh, that a market has to understand that we as regulators are going to push the market towards an understanding that we're not going to divide people into various groups uh, this has to be fine-tuning 
lengthy in terms of time. Tuning to new circumstances and trends. And this is not a one off case. When a person comes to me, I assess his risk profile and I keep working with him for 10 years based on the fact that I did the risk assessment or I tested uh, his knowledge, and then 40 years later I can sell him the instrument without testing. That's not customization. So if we believe uh, that uh, these uh, three pillars like cheap, fast, and customized, then understanding what really client needs in terms of ethics is a very important component. The second element that seems to me is a trade-off between a business model of a uh, producer of a robot and the uh, requirement of humans. If a robot is created to sell a brokerage service, we have certain ethical conflict and conflict of interest and ethical conflict because a human uh, perceives that a robot is operating on uh, their part, and but the business model is to provoke people on trades and much better and why I believe that the robot should be on the side of software company and that uh, sell it to a human and then uh, this robot uh, services the human where software companies does take part because there is no conflict here but if a robot uh, is uh, received from a broker then this robot will advise um, uh, trading uh, those uh, securities uh, offered by this broker, so it will be monetized, not that the person uh, paid for, uh, but other things uh, not clear to a human because um, he doesn't want to figure out. And information is closure, a third element. Information is uh, two types. The person is able to understand it or not able, uh, roughly speaking. If we close our eyes, uh, the person, uh, it doesn't matter how to explain it, how to algorithm. And even if you provide the full guidance and the full course, and uh, they won't understand, and they will close their eyes and see the black box. However, eth ethical questions, whether a human need to be uh, told that uh, a robot uh, and, and not, not a human but um, uh, AI is communicating, and, um, and you need to tell about the track record of this AI, because very often, speaking about experience, uh, we omit uh, information disclosure about the type of ex uh, experience, whether it's successful or not, if this robot operates 10 years on the market and, and losing money uh, of their clients. And um, but there is advertising that we are 10 years on the market and we service 2 million people. Uh, so what the human will understand that it's a good robot. So it's also ethical thing how uh, people need to be explained and whether it's a machine learning uh, or uh, intellect as a result of machine learning or human and to what extent um, whatever that was already received could generate some positive result because uh, accepting risk or tolerance to risk on financial market doesn't mean anything. The more risk you take, um, the more expectations of your uh, losses uh, rather than uh, winning. And uh, the ability to manage risk uh, is uh, providing mathematical expectation more than zero. So in this sense, it's easier that a robot can buy shares um, uh, higher than the average on the market. And the human should get enough comfort regarding the track record of this algorithm. Then if this algorithm is self-learning, then you need to put it in uh, to ch for checking and, uh, and check whether they are overdone something with these staples, and otherwise it's not good. Thank you. Um, you touched upon the issue about generalizing, and Leonid was talking about black box and modern robots, um, either block back, black boxes or terminated systems. And slightly later, I'd like to uh, ask a question to Andre about that. And now, Grigory, um, can we go back to reality and tell uh, how is it uh, trading systems, uh, robots, and algorithms uh, that are offered to uh, people, uh, basically uh, brokers. So is there any 
uh, beginnings of AI or this uh, algorithm could be something uh, third. So if we approach from the very beginning, uh, which is called uh, robots, um, it uh, has a lot of broad uh, meaning, as you can call a robot anything where there is computer and making any transactions or applications or recommendations. So I think, and I'm not claiming 100% truth in this, but at this stage the situation is the following, that about 90% of uh, what in is called uh, robots is these are like simple instruments of automation. If we um, um, compare with a more clear thing, it's like a hammer. You can automate a hammer, like call it a robot, because it's more effective than um, can do the work of many people. Uh, next level is slightly more complicated, but still um, based on algorithms like robots, and these are about 7-8% what really used in the market when various models of machine learning is used and complicated algorithm of processing uh, big data. And um, what was mentioned by Sergey and Leonid when we um, really come to efforts to uh, develop uh, AI and neural networks, and the problem is that these approaches cannot be normally interpreted and the people, when they deal with their finance, they try to be conservative in this process, uh, with some ex rare exceptions. And there is a large inertia and resistance, and there are hedge funds around the world and com startup companies that uh, manage funds with these methods and trading, but it's less than 1%, I think. And, um, Second, as Sergei said, most of these efforts have a, a, a large percentage of failures, and this is because this area is quite new and there are no clear laws, there are creativity, experiments, various models, and second, that most methods, as how people are, work with neural networks and machine learning, most of them uh, are not suitable to finance because these transactions have their own properties. And a uh, simple example, one thing is to uh, identify pictures like cat or dog or with this um, neural network. So the other thing is to uh, to take take a deposit and increase it two times and develop a trading algorithm. Uh, there are many reasons why this task is very complicated and methods of machine learning are not always effective, and although for many things they're good. But I think the situation is what Sergei said, that robots are uh, doing robot advising, which is fashionable, as usually, as I see, is a rough model of of good investment uh, advice is like in a joke um, while I um, uh, about the, um, a horse, you know. When they called an economist and a mathematician and physician and, and, and asked to develop a model how to win in, in horse uh, races and economists uh, I gave a million dollar and they ask um, about results and say I analyzed the data about their horses and their origins and have the model that predict um, the winner with a, a probability of 50, 51%. And mathematician and statistician say, I analyze everything, like whether uh, the factors I have a complicated machine learning and my model predicts a uh, 52% probability uh, winner. And physics says, uh, I need another 10 years, $1 billion, but I, I built a model of a horse in vacuum. So here we see the robot advisors are so far primitive and a quite rough model of a good financial advisor. It does mean it cannot be improved and it will be improved, but there are many questions about that. And 
as you say, whether it's a damage, loss, and the client should act, and there's a probability which is not maybe, maybe not good in, in the long term. And uh, there are other ethical questions like real case, whether a big robot advisor was a year ago and was a big company, Betterman, in the United States, and they have, uh, they have they are a large robot advisor. And one of the days when in the United States market there was a large drop, they just disconnected the ability of clients to, to, to sell. I cannot like disconnect from the strategy. And at that moment, they were right, because the market was fluctuating a couple of days, and it recovered. And a turning on, and it was all good. But this decision uh, is clear that the management of the company made it. But what if the robot uh, made this decision when they limit uh, certain rights of clients? Um, but in this case, they made a better in long term, but possibly could make worse short term because the market could go uh, further down. And it's very probabilistic, uh, stochastic, uh, uh, and various horizons. So I would support Sergey uh, that we need uh, serious limitations and serious approach, like how to train it and. and about the learning and the goals, but so far, with uh, rare exceptions, um, the success what is called robots and algorithmic trading is much more simple than uh, what we are discussing now. Well, we're talking about robots and organized trades, and stock exchange by the robot in Exchange is a generation is a is a effort to duplicate actions of human and also ethically. But what are the market participants and professionals arriving to success? Only those who express uh, individuality and individual strategies and and those who also express aggression. So if you try to build a robot that would be better than a human and um, remove all its deficiencies, then probably this deficiency and aggression uh, should be removed uh, primarily. And um, the key problem and the issue that the, the robot first needs to replace a human and make actions of the most effective on the market is clear. But whether we can uh, do for this universal robot. Can we do our own code of behavior, Andre? Or we can be guided by the same principles that are um, effective for mankind in, in principle. Well, if we move to this philosophy, philosophic interpretation of this discussion, well, you understand I'm not a specialist in financial markets. and. They are, they are not in Yandex. It's a different area. But Yandex is traded. Well, but specialists, we are specialists in another area uh, related with development of very complex and uh, more one of the best uh, self learning algorithms. So I want to tell about. Uh, what was mentioned today, uh, two important things. First, conceptually, it's a simple statement that any complex issue has a simple, obvious, and wrong solution. And the example is uh, three laws of robotics, because one of the areas since you can make damage and, and per human and kill. Um, it is related to the issue of machine uh, intellect. These are pilotless vehicles. And you can notice that the first law uh, should connect pilotless or prohibit pilotless vehicle, obviously, because classical dilemma is that we make a decision whom to kill. And this decision that really need to be taken on the road by any 
are part of this vehicle. So whatever car damage a human or with inaction, but with an action can also kill someone. And in this situation, the law would not be applied when driving a vehicle. Well, there is a simple answer, and I can offer you a, a human who is the owner of the company that leases these vehicles. They cannot be damaged. No, no, no. Nobody is going to sit in this vehicle that has this uh, azim of uh, law is included in the system, believe me. And this is a classical story when they tell that the driver, uh, uh, automated driver, should accept ethical, should make ethical uh, decision than uh, speaking with any representative of the automaker or uh, human even would not test uh, a vehicle in a, in a the seller tells that it's going to be pilotless and with certain decisions they can decide to try to kill yourself uh, because some uh, is crossing the road and the people are that way and the ethics is um, is coded in a society and I'm not afraid to to walk on Bangladesh of Sochi at night, even Moscow streets, because I'm convinced that I'll comply with this, like not to kill. But some most of are afraid if they kill me, they go to jail. So coding this ethics helps mankind to survive. And I'm sure that codification and applying and pilotless vehicles um, on the roads so or system of algorithmic trading is very important and required. And the next question is how this codification is on real life with new ways. And I like to tell you a second story, like the black box. Like why is it considered that the black box is something that emerged with complicated self-learning algorithms? I'm sorry, black box has been used by mankind for not one century, and this is called medicine and, and drugs, uh, except like simple surgical solutions, so classical story. And that's an example that the uh, substance, like which is used in like 120 billion uh, tablets per year, was was received in the end of 19th century, and in the last year it got the trading mark aspirin. So more or less the principles of interaction were understood in the 70s, and the Nobel Prize was given for that. So clarification works that fundamentally change our understanding how aspirin works were published in 1995. And for this time, you understand how many people consume this aspirin as a black box. <laughs> Absolutely. And by the way, it's, I'll give you this example because I'm convinced that regulation of pilotless vehicles and financial markets uh, should be taken, should be approached like mankind approaches regulation of the turnover of uh, into clinical of, of new drugs. And first, this is uh, long term testing. That's coin on uh, some uh, animals or, or models, and then uh, limited uh, clinical trials, and and then already uh, widespread use and sell, and immediately after uh, heavy consequences are identified, it's. Uh, immediate stop until find out the cancer. We cannot predict, none of the pharmaceuticals can predict in advance what can go wrong, and sometimes it happens. However, we eat a lot of drugs, and nobody wants to reject it, and we learn to work with it in legislation and licensing, and look at the pharmacological this uh, we are similar when I think about pilotless and other things where industrial application of AI could damage uh, significantly. And we are looking how other black boxes are introduced like medicine in, in uh, Westbury use. Well, there's been examples comparable to that in the financial market 
as well. I remember that were many developers in Russia that would do the development here, that would do the testing here, and then would ship the models, their trading models, to larger markets and then see how they would perform there. As for the decisions that the robot will take about who to kill, I think I actually know the answer. They will kill the person with a less expensive in insurance premium. Well, that could be the case elsewhere, but in China, yes. They don't know, it. they're not trained yet, but at all these conferences where people discuss drones and stuff, in Europe, you know, we have the ethical discussions and philosophers join in, but then the Chinese representatives come in and say that driverless, when driverless becomes massive, this will have to be done in real time. Therefore, you would uh, sacrifice the person or the people with the least social ranking. Well, this, m I think, takes us to the question of interface between different cultures, whether there ne are needed different codes in different cultures, and whether this is the case right now, or are we moving to a new reality which will, in which these cultural codes would be synchronized. I think today the fundamental principles are shared and well known. There, there are five, the confidentiality, transparency, security, and so on. But at the next step, when you have to define these uh, terms, what security is and uh, what transparency is, then the definitions will differ and things will get complex. Therefore, it's important to understand the history of the discussions around this question. First, ethics and the like were discussed by the experts and uh, larger companies, but now it's discussed at national and international level by governments. There's been papers by the European Parliament, by the European Commission, there's a number of uh, countries that signed, uh, signed to the conceptual definitions that they put forward. But it does get complex. Uh, a study that wanted to find out how does culture in different countries influence driverless car accident situation when it's going to lead to a fatality, and who should we protect? In Asian countries, the answer was that you would have to save the elderly whilst or the older and sacrifice the younger and in Europe it was the opposite saves the young and sacrifice the older the Ministry of Transport in Germany for instance have come up with a sort of an obvious principle saying that the choice should not be discriminatory by race, ethnicity, or gender. And every everything you could sacrifice to save a human life, if it's a material asset, you should sacrifice it. So that uh, goes against your example about insurance costs. So humans will come first in uh, the German situation. So all in all, what we see now, that specific tuning of this fundamental principle, so to say, they are more culture-oriented and therefore nationally specific, although the fundamentals are operating across national boundaries. 
I also believe that the big transnational corporations will therefore have or choose to move uh, from one point of registration in one country to another, specifically because of these reasons. Sergey, I would like to address this question to you. Um, so in China, my re- social ranking will be zero, right? I was thinking. So foreign tourists won't be very welcome or won't be very safe. The same will apply if Chinese uh, tourists come to Russia. Yes, I mean, if the ranking system, the social ranking system will be deployed into these situations or a foreigner should, uh, by default, be given a certain number of these points, like a million, and that will protect them or just not travel there. Of course, there are rules, some well-known, some that we're less aware of about what's good and what's not. And if a robot misbehaves, the upheaval caused would uh, be much higher than if a person misbehaves. And our culture, in some aspects, Aspects. It's more Asian than European in the sense that it is more state-centric and or society-centric. And therefore, in a number of discussions, the force Azimov's law is uh, frequently in the focus because an individual's freedom is not an absolute. For us, I think, in this country, the societal influence is uh, of uh, a much higher importance. So I think we have to keep in mind that element of uh, the Russian culture. The second point, and whether we apply them to financial or non-financial market, will change based on scale. Say, if it's just if the amount of securities of a kind sold was 10, that's one case. But if the amount grows to 10,000, then it's a different reality simply because of the state, and the state accounts for that differently. Therefore, the scale will in a pendulum-like mode will go back and forth between the requirements of uh, society and regulations of the state and change the behavior of of algorithms. If the developers of algorithms would want to protect themselves from an excessive involvement uh, of the state, and uh, it does get excessive excessive from time to time when we exaggerate the, the problem. But still, I believe that tests and trials in this sphere will have to be even more elaborate and even more rigid than in uh, the healthcare industry. And it's not the case as of now. Now, as soon as you invent something, you are allowed to sell it as broadly as you can. And I don't think this is the right thing to do. We've uh, developed a technology at the Central Bank of Russia that will allow to digitize the risks of a given company. Say, if your 10 million customers did not have access to their bank cards for four hours, That is a huge inconvenience. And as a country, we've moved so much in terms of uh, cashless payments. I think now we have 61, almost two-thirds of cashless payments. So people trust the plastic. People trust the card. And uh, most would uh, get rid of uh, notes if they could but they need them for some everyday uh, payments still. But they sort of trust that the cards in general work. So it is a black box. People don't really invest their time in understanding how this operates, or they're not very interested. But they assume, since there's no folk knowledge that 
this is unsafe, if the press is not reporting that this is unsafe, that it must be safe. Um, or, or if it's not criminalized. Another thought which I want to leave hanging here is that the ethics is uh, also made more real by the punishment that exists. It's not just the commercial interest of wanting to earn more, but it's also uh, the responsibility the negative sort of uh, the carrot and stick situation because uh, the carrot is obvious here. If the product's good, I, my market share will grow. But if the punishment's in place, I think we have to think about it. This is one of the ways of uh, implementing the Essex. That's correct. And um, the robo advisor, unfortunately, didn't have the sandbox mode where these will be tested. Uh, and this puts huge responsibility on the companies that actually introduce robot advisors to the market because they fail. If they fail, then the regulator will have to intervene, and uh, that will really cut. That will really increase the the time period of. Uh, between the development of technology and its introduction to the market. I think the same applies uh, to the pharmaceutical industry. What Andre has described, it takes tens of years for a new drug to make to the market, and not every drug can make it to the market, even if they're efficient. And yes, it's increasing now, and not because the legislation is improving, but but because they try to perfect the testing uh, and trialing procedures. Another question about ethics. Is there some sort of understanding about how the algorithm should be tested before they're available at uh, the, to the dealers at the exchange. Well, I have to start with a comment that every algorithm that's made available comes as a part of a framework, which is a, a lot of software, many elements that have been tested thoroughly at in different stages, and they're tested by different developers. The robots undergo the standardized procedure upon which we first do a back test, uh, which is a virtual test. And it is a complex topic in itself, because you can really fool yourself very easily to do it the, in the right way. It's very difficult. And uh, there's quite a few back tests offers uh, on the market that promise to make you all the money that, that there is. There are, of course, uh, models and uh, pilot trading, but all the, simula all the modeling that we have said, Moscow Stock Exchange, they're fairly primitive, and they only allow you to test the technical aspects, whether the technical parameters operate as they expect it to or whether they don't. Then trading on small scale starts with uh, incremental increase of volumes and I was also wanting to add actually when you discussed the, ph the pharmaceutical industry now in the Silicon Valley they say uh, if you're releasing something that you're not ashamed of then you're releasing it too late therefore time to market is a very important criterion uh, for the de IT development Comp if you want to compare this to the driverless cars then the developers would have to do the neural network for f for 15 years and testing and then they will do new software and an update will this work like that the industries are different and the approaches are different and the ethics have been different until now, and therefore I think the right balance is key. The ethical aspects, as Sergei and Leonid and everybody else has mentioned, is uh, about the development. 
It's a complex field, but at the same time, we all have some fundamental understanding of, of the good and the bad. I remember when I passed the certification for financial analytics, there's a big chunk about ethics. And many people actually think it very difficult. I never read it in full. But I could always, but I could always do get the, the good grade because it's based on 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 the shared assumptions that it, it's not right to to cheat on your customer. And uh, the legislation for the robots. Maybe we should come up with ten commandments for the robot developers rather than robots, and uh, then it has to be implemented in in some fashion. If it's a large ecosystem with a lot of developers, with a lot of new products, how do you regulate this? I don't think it's possible. Then the regulator, I guess, would have to come up with standards or parameters or a code, an ethical code. But then, after that, you, you can just punish post factum if something happens, if the, if the code's violated, and then you impose some sort of sanction or so on. Because I don't think there's time to test and uh, trial everything. A, a brief comment about time to market and how, how this uh, interconnects. In uh, 1989, CEO of Oracle, Larry Ellison, was almost uh, imprisoned because uh, in a competitive business case where the vendors were given green light and Oracle vendors started to actually sell the version of Oracle database, which will only be available in six months, which was not de facto available at the point where they started the sales. And we were their partners at the time, and we actually had to pay the, co the cost of that because the, um, the HQ talked us into selling our uh, Oracle database uh, based on the best uh, hardware, which was a clone of Sana, and then because they promised that the Oracle will be av available on this hardware as well, but Oracle never did. So our Vesta could never work with Oracle software, and our database was not available. Therefore, time to market. Uh, and the uh, ethics, they really are very comparable. And I'd like to add more on the subject. Since it's a hot subject, everyone is discussing drones. Everyone is, everyone knows uh, Tesla and Elon Musk. They're selling their vehicles at top prices and full sales drive right now, $5,000. Uh, cost $5,000 that may be developed sometime in the future. But you're saying it doesn't exist yet, but the gimmick in the other case was that people were saying it's going to be out tomorrow, and that's why clients were buying. But yes, on the one hand, I'm saying it doesn't exist. But on the other hand, in a Twitter, every three months I, I tweet uh, that it's going to appear next year. And every three months I keep postponing. So it's a very good question on the connection and interaction between human and robot. There is a simple truth that all the novels uh, should uh, have an easier mode than a working business model. In this case, I think it will be incorrect for us, uh, although despite community expectations, to demand more ethical behavior from robots or than humans. And we are saying we are beginning to introduce ethos uh, at the level of financial companies as a process. I think it's very important because if uh, we decide today that robots should become super ethical and uh, create certain expectations, it will never take off. Uh, so it's not only the issue of time to market. Uh, however, it's the issue that the robot cannot be holier than thou. And, um, uh, we're not only speaking of programmers. I think it's uh, all these issues are closely inter interwined, and we understand that the future is behind robotics, but we shouldn't uh, leave ethos, ethics of brokers, ethics, management ethics. Mr. Tinkoff uh, called me today, and I asked him if he has a single foreign uh, database, and. 
I'm asking him, uh, I said, why are you trying to sell your clients foreign securities? You haven't got a single. But he said, look at the multipliers, they're crazy. So I mean in a personal portfolio, his foreign securities. Well, if you take the ratios for American securities, their market cap exceeds by hundreds uh, the pure profit of the pure company profit and the Russian companies show higher dividends. So is it ethical to propose a broker on the first page foreign securities and the, and the Russian on a page 16? I think it's a question to the people because people are doing it and if we don't uh, arrange the right ethics with the people in the market, it will be quite difficult to uh, design ethics into robots. And I don't think this panel should be interpreted as a desire to begin ethics with robots. I think developers and uh, prof market professionals should also employ ethics. Well, we are certainly not aiming to outdo evolution and leave the human kind behind and move on to Robert learning. Well, Andre, we're also out of time. We still got a few questions now in terms of cultural differences, in terms of robot ethics. They are, they certainly exist. At the top layer, what we call Hellenistic culture, I will allow myself to disagree. We are more, we belong to rather than to Hellenistic culture, rather than Confucian. Uh, and Hellenistic culture puts a person first. And I have a suspicion that, m that in a lot of areas of AI, the Chinese will quickly outdo the US and Russia both. For instance, uh, I'll give you another case in point. Um, cars, we've been discussing this with colleagues. There is a football uh, cup. Uh, where robots play against uh, human footballers and guys from Fistac uh, won uh, this match and um, and according to the condition according to the uh, rec to the technical specs they have to develop a model of a robot footballer so within a usual football match a footballer uh, usually slids fit first on the ground sometimes it can lead to injuries and should a robot do something like that understanding he can really harm obviously cause obvious harm to a person and if we remove this function then people will understand that they're acting against ineffective robots and in this case a person will get multiple advantages over robots yes uh, there is a clear cut parallels to the financial market that's already been regulated and I don't have a specific uh, viewpoint for instance spoofing spoofing has been uh, criminalized in the US spoofing is a phenomena when humans or robots launch large bids to stimulate volume trading that doesn't exist on a bid ask spread and other robots are just begin trading begin uh, selling and vice versa so this is a type of uh, manipulation uh, and uh, in the U.S. when Dodd-Frank Act was passed, 2,000 pages no, that no one read, uh, that's where this activity became a criminal act in the Dodd-Frank Act. And hence it was scaled to any other international regulatory practices. So if we're drawing parallels with short-term trading, this is like playing poker. But also they're creating economic value, they're creating liquidity, an opportunity for real investors to buy and sell, to trade at any time with minimum with minimum cost. But when they play with each other, the regulator comes and says, look, you cannot bluff anymore in poker. We, we can jail you for that. And this is the practice we have. This, is, uh, this was the regulators and the community decision. So uh, they probably had own interest. But yes, in any game, 
and trading is similar to football. It's also a type of game. There are issues when there are debatable uh, acts and the regulator has to set the game rules. So speaking of trading, we understand that uh, creating a single financial ecosystem, the rules that work in trading can be scaled to other financial relationship between people or people and robots. So I'll move on to the questions. We have three questions and we are right out of time. I have a question for Leonid. Regarding discrimination, did it happen because of learning the model uh, using historical data set with discrimination as people were doing at admissions? But will the program be able to overcome it in the future, the same as people did? Well, look, uh, we are coming back to the origins of this discussion. It all depends on what is programmed into the software. So if the developers uh, allow the program to do that, at the same time introducing relevant limitations, restrictions, well, why not? It can be. Thank you. And then um, drawing parallels to the medical sector, maybe we should think of uh, some type of vaccination for all the for all the financial market players. You can uh, lose a little amount of money uh, at the outset, but then you get certain immunity, and then you begin understanding, and then you begin better understanding risks and financial activity. I think it's a question for you, Sergey. Well, this is my favorite question since unfortunately we don't have any inherent structures as our body does we don't our brain cannot get immune to negative financial decisions and negative financial market uh, experience doesn't spell out vulnerability lack uh, loss of vulnerability to future losses so if a person lost their savings even in a pyramid he will never become a great trader yes he is going to look for another pyramid if uh, everything if he is uh, solid, he is going to move on to the next pyramid, or he just simply won't take part. But he certainly will not invest. He will either go and play, or either will not play at all. But he will never gain any knowledge and any experience in working in the stock market due to his losses. And if he loses a few times, then he will never go on. And he will stop at the deposit trades with credit organizations. And this is why we have to be very careful uh, towards uh, losses, especially in volumes that can reduce their social status. Uh, the issue of gambling and standard hum and normal human desire to get even doesn't go away until a person is solvent. Yes, of course, but on the other hand, there is payment uh, for tuition. And, uh, for example, to learn uh, to play pool semi-professionally, you need to lose to professionals uh, over a certain period of time. You have to lose a serious amount of money, otherwise you will never learn to play pool, uh, even at a semi-professional level. I think it takes the whole life to keep learning in the financial market. And now the final question. You're discussing robots only applicable to speculative trades in the markets. But the main trend for development of robot advisors is compiling portfolios and restructuring these portfolios, uh, factoring costs. And this is a very interesting application. So maybe it's not the issue of robots, but the actual behavior scenarios using scenarios, use case scenarios in the markets. Well, on the one hand, yes, and on the other hand, no. Um, I don't have an unequivocal answer because all the models are based on certain historical data sets. What used to work historically based on some certain unique conditions, whether they are replicated in the future, it's unknown. 
whether it's better to work w using a certain model than without. Certainly it's better. And now the situation is such, as Sergey has already mentioned, most robo devices are too simple and not targeted at the end user. Yes, this is the situation, but there is lots of potential for evolving this product. And given time, I'm sure we'll see a very complex robo advisors that will account completely different aspects uh, and interests of the end user. And then certainly in the West, everything is moving on uh, to a shift in a paradigm where such robo-advising uh, doesn't carry large uh, commissions. And next step is tax planning, inheritance planning, and uh, advisors, consultants in the West uh, with uh, serious competition, with strong competition, are moving uh, to this sector. And the easiest parts are going to be automated, they're going to be robotized and the, the further we go, the further down the road we go, the more of this phenomena we will see. And certainly robot advisors will take a big slice. Thank you very much for your participation in this panel discussion. We are forced to conclude this session. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.